One of the most high-stake, important elections of 2014 is happening right now. It's a three-day election that ends tomorrow night. It's not done at polling places. The election is taking place at this Volkswagen plant in Chattanooga, Tennessee, where approximately 1,500 workers are trying to decide if they want to be part of the United Auto Workers Union, making it the first factory owned entirely by a foreign car maker to be organized by the United Auto Workers. Now, here's the thing. The workers inside the plant appear to want to join the union. And executives, management inside the plant, appear to not want to interfere, saying, quote, Volkswagen is committed to neutrality and calls upon all third parties to honor the principle of neutrality. Volkswagen operates a union workforce in their home of Germany. They also operate something called a works council, basically a committee of white and blue collar workers who work with management on policies and solving problems. And Volkswagen seems very interested in a German style works council at the Chattanooga plant, saying our works councils are key to our success and productivity. So you would think, great, workers are going to choose on their own. Corporations are going to stay out of it, which basically never happens in union elections. And it's a free country, right? I mean, we've got free market capitalism where the big bad government doesn't tell companies what to do. This would be a matter that would solely be between management and the workers. But no, no, big government has decided that it doesn't want to leave the decision to the workers or management of this private company. Senator Bob Corker spoke out against the United Auto Workers on Tuesday. Take a look. We're just concerned about the impact an outside entity, look at Detroit if you want a comparison, look at the impact that they could have on our community. Yeah, that's Republican Senator Bob Corker of Tennessee, who wants to tell executives at Volkswagen how to run their company, conduct themselves, and manage an election. And he wants to tell the workers of his state to vote against the union. And along with Tennessee state lawmakers, get this, is threatening to withhold tax incentives for further expansion of the three-year-old assembly plant if Chattanooga workers vote this week to join the UAW. In other words, they're going to use the power of the state to coerce workers' votes. OK, and Republican Senator Bob Corker would rather Chattanoogans lose their jobs than have union jobs. So conservatives, here's your test. Do you care about the freedom of private businesses or do you just hate unions? Because the lines on this one are crystal clear. If you care about businesses having the freedom to do whatever they want, then you let Volkswagen do what they want to do and you get the heck out of the way. If you're just animated by hating unions, then you do what Bob Corker does. So which side are you on? Joining me now, my colleague, John Nichols, Washington correspondent for The Nation magazine, author of Uprising, How Wisconsin Renewed the Politics of Protest from Madison to Wall Street. Okay, what is going on here in the, con the, the Corker Volkswagen thing is just nuts, right? <laughs> Corker says he's going to stay out of it. It would be inappropriate. Yes, then he comes forward to basically be like, they're going to take away your second assembly. You're not going to get any expansions and any more jobs if you guys vote for the union. Yeah, and also ultimately even suggesting that the plant may be in trouble if you don't back the union. And this is bizarre. Because, of course, Corker's a guy who, who helped to bring this plant in. You know, he's always been very encouraging of it. And, and he has made statements in the past, as In These Times revealed. Uh, there's videos of him saying good things about the role that unions have played. Right. But in this circumstance, he has just gone to a point where I have never seen a politician go. He is literally, he literally said, I'm staying out. I don't want to interfere. And then the next day, was holding a press conference interfering. With other, and we should say, it's other Republicans in the state, other prominent Republicans Who in the have state. gone further than he. Even further than he. Yeah. Basically, the other, what I love it is, they're like, you know all that corporate welfare that we threw at you? Yeah. We're gonna, the, the corporate welfare we threw at you to come build your non-unionized plant. Well, that is contingent on the plant being non-unionized. Then he says he threatens they're going to close the factory. Volkswagen has to come out with a statement saying, no, that's not true. And then this is him yesterday. I've had conversations today, and based on those, I'm assured that should workers vote against the UAW, if they vote against, mm -hmm. Volkswagen will announce in the coming weeks it will manufacture its new midsize SUV here in Chattanooga. Now, this is where it gets incredible, Chris, because the guy who runs the plant for Volkswagen came out and said, that's not the case. It is absolutely not the case. And then we know that the Volkswagen execs in Germany by all accounts, have been very encouraging of the neutrality stance, actually do see this as part of a global strategy and have, in fact, benefited from their inv involvement with work councils before. So they've, I don't know who he's talking to. Right. It's, you know, it's not like he put, got on a phone to Germany and found somebody there. And the guy who's running the plant on the ground here 
says no. You know what? You know what, what, what's fascinating about this too is that it is so the norm in this country that union elections are there is such a thumb on the scale, right? That, oh yeah. That having a neutral election just freaks people out. Like mm. what? They're just going to go in and decide? There's not going to be a huge campaign against it? It's like they need like it's like the Republicans in the state need to fill the vacuum that management's supposed to play. Well, there's some, there's and there's something more here too. I mean, and I think we have to be honest about this. Corker actually has been speaking out against the union for quite a while now, going back into last year. He made a statement a while back that was incredibly revealing. He said, "Well, if the union gets in here, then it's going to be BMW and Nissan and all these other plants. And, and what you start to realize is that some of these folks, some of these southern politicians, have for so long done their economic development based on just the, their cell was no union that I think they're really terrified that they might have to go out and try to track business based on on their strengths. So look, look, look at this map of foreign automakers where they have their plants, um, majority of which are three states, Alabama, Tennessee, and Mississippi, Kentucky, Texas, South Carolina, and West Virginia. So there, there has been this huge move, right? The South brought a lot of, first it got textiles, <laughs> then yeah. it went to auto, and it said, hey, you could come and have union-free labor. That has been the selling point of Southern politicians trying to lure big employers down the South for, since the 1940s. Since the 1940s. And the, the fear is that this breaks some kind of firewall and it spreads throughout the South. It is. And, and it is because of something that the United Auto Workers have done. They have shown a flexibility here that I don't know that some of those politicians ever thought they would. The United Auto Workers have said, look, we want to organize this plan, of course, and we want to bargain on wages, but we're willing to give up a lot of the say as regards work rules, right. structure, to this work council, which will have non-union and union people in it. And I think, the, this is the subtlety of it, I think there are a lot of folks saying that might actually sell in the South. Interesting. John Nichols of The Nation, thanks so much for coming by. Pleasure. All right, the billionaire who says 99 percenters should stop complaining because they don't live in China or India, I think, something coming up.